Uh, and I want to begin by thanking the Honourable Member for Truro and Falmouth for her excellent um, opening of this debate and sharing her experiences. Because for those who have suffered baby loss or stillbirth, um, we have a space in our lives that stays with us every single day. And you don't, you don't go over it, you just somehow learn to build your life around that space in that shadow, and it never goes away. And this annual debate is very special to me, um, having suffered a stillbirth at full term in 2009, in which I too almost died. And this stillbirth followed a miscarriage in 2008 after five years of fertility treatment. And like so many parents, perhaps the hardest aspect of coping with this loss for my husband and I, who are not unique in this regard, is the knowledge that our loss was due to glaring mistakes in my care. But I'm grateful to be able to have a voice in this debate today, a voice not just for baby Kenneth, who I lost, but for all the lost babies and their grief-stricken parents who will never be quite the same after such a profound loss. Now, this year, the context of our baby loss debate takes place in the shadow of COVID-19. And it's not yet known what risk COVID poses to pregnant women, although the points made by the Honourable Member for Guildford, um, I think, were certainly worth listening to in that regard and weighing that up. It has been reported there's been a rise in stillbirths between April and June this year at the peak of the pandemic, around 40 stillbirths after labour began, compared with 24 in the same period last year, according to the patient safety body. So that's something to consider. Now, this may be, as we've heard, because women delay seeking care because they're concerned about COVID. And if that's the case, um, we need to understand that expectant mums clearly need reassurance and they need to be secure in the knowledge that um, the NHS, even as it deals with COVID, is still there for them. Those who have suffered the loss of a child during the COVID report the new restrictions in our hospital environments, such as the need for staff to wear protective equipment, can present a barrier to delivering the kind of care that bereavement requires. And one of the things I always mention in these yearly debates about baby loss is the terrible isolating grief that such a loss brings. Now, people with the best will in the world often don't know what to say to you because the loss of a baby before, during or shortly after birth is like no other loss. Because in the normal course of events, when you suffer a loss, whether it's a husband, a father, a mother, a brother, there's a life that's been lived and there's memories that people can talk and take comfort from. They can talk about it, you know, about what the person was like, how they lived their lives, etc. Recollections which can help people bring comfort as they share the bonds of grief. But for those families who have suffered a stillbirth or a baby loss, there's no such shared memories. There was no opportunity to make these memories. All there is is a deep sense of being robbed of a life, a life filled with potential that will never be realised. And during COVID, the isolation of grief that always accompanies the unnatural event of burying your child is all the more stark. You cannot have the comfort of close family members. You can't have people rallying around as they would wish to, to distract you from your stupor of grief and the sense of bewilder bewilderment that the baby you'd been waiting for for nine months, for which you had prepared perhaps even for longer than nine months. This rallying around is simply not permitted. Even the funeral, the most heartbreaking thing a parent will ever have to do, bury their own child. Even the funeral comes with limitations during COVID. Numbers are limited, so many people who would wish to attend might not be able to. Parents are denied the service that they might wish, the flowers that they might wish, the hymns, the cards, restrictions even on who can carry the coffin. These awful, grotesque choices and decisions that no one wants to ever have to make are magnified by their absence during COVID-19. And post-baby loss, when the terrible news has been communicated to the wider family, when bereaved parents leave the hospital and return home, when the funeral has taken place, many, many bereaved parents seek the support of counselling from baby loss charities. And I wish to pay tribute to the marvellous work that these charities do. However, they themselves will tell you that as they try to support parents and families through the trauma of baby loss, measures they need to put in place, such as social distancing, have had a major impact on access to care and support for bereaved parents and have also complicated the grief and responses to pregnancy and baby loss. And the Lullaby Trust has pointed out that social distancing may exacerbate grief and isolation, and I think that's something we can all understand. As we all struggle with this ongoing health pandemic, as it challenges us all in different ways, how much more are those parents who have lost their child going to struggle in that context? So this year's Baby Loss Awareness Reflections 
As we talk about the loneliness of grief, which I believe is very particular when you're talking about the death of a baby, the context of COVID-19 with the specific isolation that that too brings with it makes dealing with the awful life event, life-changing event of losing a baby all the more horrific. And I hope we can all consider how this can be addressed to help those we represent who are going through this horror as we grapple with the challenges of COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you.